This week's chapter is on the rock types. There's three major rock types. The week before the test, we already talked about igneous rock. So you should already have notes on igneous rock. I'm not going to go over all of this again. You should make sure you have it in the same section with your other rock, with your new rock types, so that you could add that in as well. Igneous rock, as you know, is formed in volcanic areas from magma or lava. In many ways, it's the easiest one to identify because it's fairly distinctive. We looked at the granite and um, basalt, lava rock, and obsidian. So you saw those different types on the note-taking thing you saw here from yesterday. Describe and define the rock type. How is it formed? Where is it found? And three examples. So that's pretty easy for volcanic rock. So let's go on to our next rock type. Next in the textbook is sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rock is formed in layers of sediments. And sediment actually are little small bits of eroded rock, soil, and sometimes living or organic matter. Uh, so you can actually have, like, coal has broken down living things in it. This is the one, the type of rock that's most commonly has fossils in it because it does actually have living um, or organic matter in it. So sediment usually means stuff that is settled to the bottom. The rest of this quarter, we end up talking about erosion. Erosion is rocks break down into sand or mud. So the sedimentary rock, it's formed in layers, but you don't always see the layers. Um, so sand, mud, gravel, and then it gets cemented together. It can be classified by size and type of sediments. It's called classed size. Don't need to worry about that. But if it's mud or very fine sediment, it is something called shale or mudstone. Uh, anyone familiar with shale? What shale is oftentimes used for? What shale might look like? There's a specific type of shale called oil shale, which has a lot of organic mat matter in it. And that's one of our sources of natural gas is um, the fracking or the fracturing of oil shale to get the oil out of it. So mud and fine sediments, shale and mudstone. And that has a very fine texture um, and it looks very smooth. Sandstone, um, the sand sized sediments, very easy to identify. It looks like sand. The surface of it looks like sandpaper. This is very common around here. It's common as a building material, um, flagstone, sandstone, um, lion sandstone. It's used in a lot of the buildings at CU. It's a very common building material here in Boulder County. Um, limestone is a lot like sandstone. It's usually the lighter colors. Instead of the reds and yellows, it's kind of whitish. And the lime comes from calcium from shells. And I'll show you some examples of that. And then the biggest type, conglomerate. Do you remember when we talked about conglomerate before? Conglomerate is um, just means a bunch of things stuck together. So it looks like concrete. And in fact, concrete that you make is actually a human-made um, sedimentary rock. You take gravel and sand and mix it together with cement that chemically dries, and you've got a conglomerate rock. Coal is another type of sedimentary rock. It's rich in organic matter, so you had plants and animals that have decomposed and are compressed together, and because of that you can burn coal for energy. Sedimentary rock usually forms at the bottom of ponds and lakes or oceans and deserts, and it can tell us a lot about past climate. It is the type of rock most likely to have fossils. So sedimentary rock is actually relatively easy to identify. If you went back to your notes from yesterday, so describe it. It's also you can you can oftentimes see layers in this rock. Um, how is it formed? It's formed by sediments, eroded sediments formed in layers and that is compressed and so either pressure or chemical changes make it into a rock. Where is it found? It's found everywhere but it's formed at the bottom of um, 
uh, lakes and rivers and oceans and F3 types we already just listed limestone shale like oil shale coal sandstone lots and lots of types okay it is um, one of the unique things it can have fossils it does not always have fossils it can have fossils but when you think about how the other two rock types are formed igneous is from melted rock are you gonna have fossils in there no because they burn up right And the third rock type is metamorphic rock. Morph to morph means to change, like the mighty Morphin Power Rangers. This is a... So morph means to change. Metamorphic rock, it used to be some other type of rock, and then it changed. So it could be sedimentary rock that changed. It could be igneous rock that changed. It could be metamorphic rock that changed to another type of metamorphic rock. It is usually ch uh, changed by extreme heat or pressure. Um, like that it was baked but not melted, or it was under so much pressure it folded and changed it chemically. So some of the examples are marble. You guys all know what marble looks like, right? Marble used to be sandstone. Slate, like slate for chalkboards, used to be shale. And nice or schist used to be granite. So I'm going to get you a couple of these samples to look at. The schist is a rock type we see around here quite a bit. It starts out looking, you know, the granite looks like. You can see the large crystals. And then it undergoes extreme pressure, and then it looks all wavy like this. So the wavy rocks like that, I think it looks like fudge ripple ice cream. Um, it's banded or folded, folded, or foliated. And so that's what the metamorphic rock, what the schist looks like. Okay. And how does it form? One of the most confusing things, guys, when people look at rock types, is they, they're confused the difference between a metamorphic rock that is changed by heat and an igneous rock that's melted. So imagine having a volcano. Here's our fabulous volcano. And you've got the magma chamber and the lava coming out like this, right? Now, the rock that's right next to this, this is all melted, right? This is magma. And if this cools, it'll become igneous rock. But what about this rock right next to it? This rock right here is not hot enough to melt, right? But it's hot enough that it, it gets baked. It gets changed because it's touching the melted rock. And so this is going to be metamorphic rock because it gets changed like by putting something in the oven and changing it and baking it changes the chemical structure. Um, also, the lava as it's running down here and touching this rock might be hot enough to change the rocks it touches there. So metamorphic, it's either under pressure and being um, crushed and changed, or it's touching volcanic areas. So you're going to find metamorphic rock in areas where either there's maybe tectonic activity or um, near areas where there's volcanic activity. So looking back to here again, from yesterday, metamorphic rock, it has gone through a change. It used to be another rock type, and now it is uh, changed. How is it formed? Extreme heat and pressure. Where is it found? We found a lot of different places. Areas where there's stress in the crust, or near volcanic areas, and then three types, um, marble, shale, or um, slate and uh, schist. Okay? <laughs> Questions about the three major rock types? Igneous, metamorphic, sedimentary. Good for that much? Okay. Then the last part we need to learn today is not on here. The rock cycle. So in the textbook, you can look at the rock cycle, but the rock cycle, a cycle is just things changing from one form to another. The rock cycle, you can actually see rocks on the earth are constantly changing. So you should do this in your notes because you'll need to label it on a test, but the rock cycle is basically how rocks 
are changing over time, usually thousands or millions of years, to one form to another. So we could put up here, let's put igneous rock. And sedimentary. And metamorphic. All right. So how is igneous rock formed? How is igneous rock formed? Yes. OK, so um, in a volcanic area, if rock is actually melted and cooled, it becomes igneous rock. So it's either magma or lava cooling. So if there's an area like at the Mid-Atlantic Ridge or in volcanic areas in Hawaii that's actually melting the rock to a liquid, then igneous rock will form. So either of the rock types, if they get thrown into a volcano, pushed into a volcanic area, could change into igneous rock. OK. So then sedimentary rock, how is sedimentary rock going to form? How is sedimentary rock going to form? So sedimentary rock is formed by eroded sediments. So erosion. So wind and water and um, other natural forces like that are going to break down rocks into sand and um, mud. So sand, mud. And then when it settles into sedimentary rock, and forms layers and then undergoes pressure or chemical changes, that's sedimentary rock. So either igneous rock or metamorphic rock could go through erosion into small particles, and then it gets compressed into sedimentary rock, right? OK, now metamorphic rock, how's metamorphic rock going to form? Metamorphic rock forms by? Yes. So you've got extreme heat and pressure. And so that's taking existing rocks, either sedimentary or igneous and changing it into metamorphic rock. Metamorphic rock can erode into sediments, can be melted into igneous rock. So all this is constantly happening, but really on a huge scale. Obviously, it takes a long time for rocks to erode and to change. So these three questions, make sure you can answer those pretty straightforward. Uh, and this one. If the Earth is 4.6 billion years old, why is the oldest rock found only about 3.5 billion years old? Right, because the other rocks, the older rocks, have been either destroyed in volcanoes or eroded or destroyed in some way. So we can only go back so far in terms of fossil record and stuff like that.